Hi, it's Greg Hurrell here to talk about Vim again. And the topic for this screencast is going to be recursive macros and replaying macros in general. So to contextualize this, I'm going to have a problem that I want to address. Um, so let's make a bunch of lines in a file that we want to number. We want to turn it into a numbered list. Now the most obvious way to do this is to just manually edit the lines and stick them in there. That could get pretty painful by the time we get to the end of the file. And Vim users generally don't like that kind of pain. So let's look for another way. One way is to enter visual block mode with Control-V, Shift-I to make an insertion, get out of insert mode, and put a number on each line. If this were a markdown document, that would be enough, because when it renders, it's actually going to turn it into a monotonically increasing numbered list. Uh, but if it's not markdown, we have to manually go in and add Oh, oops, we need to manually go in and add one to each of these numbers. You can do it with Control A, and I can I can repeat that. Um, you can imagine by the time I get to the bottom, like once again, I'm going to have to mash the key a lot, or I can do a repeat. So, 50 Control A repeated 50 times, but at that point, I type the number 50. This is not much better, or it might even be worse than just entering insert mode and typing 50, right? So let's forget that one. This kind of problem is very well suited to macros. Um, so let me show one basic way to do that. We could hit Q to report a macro, Q to select the register that we want to record into, in this case, the Q register. And I'm going to start recording this again because that is not a good way to do it. Let's start again. I'm going to start by making the first line resemble the shape that I want all the other lines to have. So I just put in the number one. Now I'm going to record the macro. So QQ starts recording into Q. I go to the start of the line with zero, I yank the word, I move down a line, shift P to paste before, go back to the start of the line, control A to increment, Q to stop recording. So at this point I can repeat that macro with shift uh, to Q, in other words, at Q. Um, so if I go at Q, at Q, at Q, it's gonna repeat for me, and in fact, I can do this a little more easily with just at at. At at is gonna repeat the last played register. But that is, not as easy as it could be. And this is what leads me to recursive macros. So let's put this back pretty much the way it was. Again, we're gonna start with that pattern of the first line looking like we want all the other lines to look. <clears throat> and I'm gonna clear the contents of the Q register. I'm gonna do that with QQQ. So why did that clear it? Well, Q started recording, Q selected the register re to record into, and then Q finished recording. Given that I didn't do anything between starting and stopping recording, it effectively cleared the contents of the queue register. So now queue is empty. And it's important that it be empty because I want to recursively call this macro from inside itself. This will become clear when I demonstrate it. So I'm going to do QQ again to start recording. Once again, zero to the start of the line. Y, shift W to yank a word. Move down the line, shift P to paste before. Zero to go to the start of the line. A to increment. Now I replay the Q macro with at Q, but it didn't do anything because Q is empty. And that's why I emptied it, because I didn't want it to do anything yet. At this point, I can stop recording with Q. And what I have is effectively this like tail recursive call, where when I run this macro again, it's gonna apply itself and then apply itself repeatedly until it hits the bottom of the file. So I can do at Q or I could do at at. So I'm gonna do at at. And I got all the way to the bottom of the file. Um, if I had like a thousand lines in here, it would overflow in the stack. Oops. So there's this Mac, max funk depth setting that you can override if you want, but it defaults to 100. That is going to limit how deeply user functions can recurse. Uh, so uh, I think that is what applies, or it probably applies in the case of macros. Um, so that's one way to do it. Um, and so if you look at what I did in a previous screencast that I'll link to, uh, you'll see that I didn't really like hitting at Q or even at at, because it's a little hard to type. And the problem there is, it's just one of ergonomics. I would much rather hit the enter key for that, because I barely use enter at all. Uh, so let's look at what I did. I've got the commits here, there we go. Um, I originally just mapped enter to at at. Problem with that was it was a blanket thing that applied in all buffers, and that actually wasn't what I wanted. So if I go to nerd tree, this is gonna be a good example of why I might not want enter to replay a macro, I should be able to hit enter and open a file. Um, likewise, I should be able to find something. So I'm gonna use the ferret plugin to search for the string vim. Now I've got a quick fix listing. I should be able to hit enter on any of these lines and have them jump to the file. 
So that's why I don't want Enter to work in any of these special buffers. I only want it to work in normal buffers. So I then went ahead and added this check here. So basically this check here is gonna ensure that only in a non-special buffer are we gonna do the at at trick. Otherwise we're just gonna do carriage return. Now the reason why carriage return is a repurposable key in my opinion is that I don't really value its function. What it does is it moves the cursor down onto the next line, which I can do with J anyway. Um, and it keeps the cursor in the first non-blank column. Now, if I want to do that, it's pretty trivial for me to just do J and then W to jump. So I don't really need the control uh, carriage return key for that. Um, and I can also just use plus for the same effect anyway, if I really did want to do it. But I effectively never want to do it. Whereas I do want to rerun macros all the time. Hence the desirability of making uh, return rerun the macro. So let's go back to our example. There are still some problems with mapping enter to at at. Um, and one of them is that it only replays the previously replayed macro. It doesn't replay the previously recorded macro. So I'll demonstrate that by opening a new Vim instance. Without a Vim info, so I'll do that with Vim dash i none. So that effectively means my registers are all empty because it didn't read the Vim info file. And now when I run at at, it says no previously re used register. So it errored. Um, I could do at q and it fails silently. It doesn't really fail, it just does nothing. So that's, that's more of a graceful degradation. Uh, but the problem here is if I record something with Q, so just say I want to record you know, appending the word this. So I do Q, Q, I insert this, I get out of insert mode, I hit Q to stop recording, and then I run at, at. Oh, it actually did work. I thought it wouldn't work. Oh, the reason it did work is because I'm running a plugin. Anyway, it normally wouldn't work. And that's annoying. Uh, so let's talk about this plugin that I'm running. Uh, I had this... I basically evolved this snippet to the point where I thought it's worth putting it in a plugin of its own. That's what's called replay. It's available in all the usual places. The most important thing you need to know is that it makes return rerun the current macro, but I'm, now, I'm just gonna show you the implementation to show you some of the details about how it works. Um, so let's try to find it. So basically it provides this mapping here that you can assign to, uh, to replay a macro, um, by default is carriage return. Um, and the real secret source here is this override of the Q key, where every time you press Q, that is every time you start a macro or stop a macro, it's gonna spy on the registers to see uh, what you actually recorded. Because there are no hooks in Vim to figure out what the last recorded macro was. So basically it's going to look at all the name registers, these ones, the ones that start with letters, and it's gonna try to find one that changed since the last time it looked. And if it does, it remembers it. This does mean if you change like multiple registers, it's just gonna stop on the first one it finds. But as, a pro as, as an approximation, it's not too bad. Um, and so when you replay a macro, the first thing that we're gonna do um, is if you're already recording, we're just gonna pass the carriage return through. We're not gonna replay the macro immediately, which means you can make recursive macros or tail recursive macros without having to clear the register first. It may not always be what you want, but in practice, it's probably probably what you want, or at least it's what I want. If you're not in the middle of recording a macro and you hit the enter key, then we're gonna check these registers. And if we found one that modified since the last time you ran, that means you recorded it, we are going to play that macro back. Um, if there isn't one that we're, and we're not sure, we're gonna try at at. If at at doesn't work, we catch that and just fall back to at Q. And furthermore, if your macro is tail recursive, we're gonna gracefully print this error message, hit max func depth, instead of spewing a massive stack trace across the screen. So let's see what this looks like in action. So once again, I'm gonna make some words here um, and stick them in the buffer. Let's say this time what I wanna do is double each word. Um, and just to show the point of spying on the registers, I'm not gonna record into QQ this time, I'm gonna record into QW. Um, so I'm gonna go to the start of the line, I'm gonna yank a word, I'm gonna append a space, get out of insert mode and then paste. Then I'm gonna go jump down and then I'm gonna hit enter, which will 
replay the current macro. Uh, so Q stops recording. Um, and at this point, I'm ready to replay the macro. So when I hit enter, it doubled all the uh, words in the file. So let's do that again, but let's make it hit the max funk depth. So how many, yeah, that's, that'll be long enough. So it's, the file's now 100 lines, or more than 100 lines long. If I hit enter, you'll see that it reports down the bottom, hit max funk depth. I can just hit enter again, and it goes all the way to the bottom. Um, so that's replay. Uh, give it a try if you'd like. Um, I hope this has been useful uh, in terms of macros and recursive macros and all that. Thanks for tuning in.